Hello, and uh, welcome to part two of the Mercury Windows 3.11 PC install. Um, first, we're going to kind of go over some of the issues that I've had, um, including a fan replacement and uh, some issues that I had with the floppy disks and some of the solutions uh, for that. And then uh, we're going to go through some pre-installation configuration. So we're going to go through uh, making sure that the BIOS are set up correctly and uh, also uh, double check the uh, dip switches for the CPU that I'm using um, and just kind of go over that uh, a little bit. And then uh, once that's complete, we're going to go ahead and install Windows 3.11 and DOS 6.22. And uh, we're going to hope everything goes well and get uh, Windows installed and see if we can check that out. So uh, let's get started. All right, so uh, here is the uh, fan I chose. Um, it's a pretty standard basic issue fan for a Socket 7 uh, motherboard. Um, it has the uh, three pin connector so we can connect it directly to the motherboard instead of using one of the uh, standard Molex connectors. Um, it did come with um, some thermal compound but I'm going to opt not to use that. And the reason being is uh, I want to use this uh, thermal pad um, because I want to be able to swap out processors in the future and I don't want to have to reapply some goop on there. Um, so this will allow me to um, remove uh, the CPU without having um, residual residue on there. Um, so the reason that I am replacing this fan is... Uh, well, take a listen. I'll um, put up a video of what it sounds like plugged in and unplugged. So here it is um, plugged in. <laughs> All right, and then here it is unplugged. And as you can see, there is a clear um, <laughs> uh, sound with that that just doesn't sound right to me. So um, I actually did uh, try to capture some slow motion video of the fan. Um, when I was watching it, uh, when I first booted it up, it was... Uh, very stuttery. Um, it's a little bit hard to see it in this video, um, but it is uh, not a consistent spin. Um, sometimes it slows almost to a halt, and uh, other times it seems to run fine. So there's definitely issues with the fan. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it with a new one, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, the next issue that I came across was actually with the installation medium. Uh, my original plan was to use the internal floppy drive in the PC to install um, directly from floppy disks, um, kind of to make it more authentic. However, um, as uh, floppy di disks are kind of getting old, um, every one of uh, the 10 disks that I have um, failed to load an image, so um, I may be able to use them for other things, but for writing an image to, it just wasn't working. Um, I tried to use my uh, USB floppy drive to write the images using WinImage. Um, and uh, it would get through the format process, although... Um, fairly inconsistent with uh, doing the format. Uh, it would usually get to 100%, um, and then the problems would start happening as it was writing the image file. So um, I'll go ahead and show you that now. Um, it was giving me all sorts of uh, head errors. So um, I believe these disks are just uh, getting too old and uh, aren't going to work for my purposes. I have heard that um, some of the older floppy disks um, manufactured earlier than something like this. Uh, let's see if these show a manufacturer date or any date. 
Uh, no. So um, I've heard that if you use older floppy disks, um, they can often be of higher quality and may last a little longer. So uh, there is a possibility I may pick some up uh, later, but they are kind of getting pricey now. So as an alternative, um, what you can get is uh, what's called a USB floppy drive emulator. And so uh, this device would actually just plug in uh, where your floppy drive plugs in. You would, uh, instead of loading the disk images to your floppy disks, you would load them to a USB thumb drive and uh, basically just uh, plug it into the floppy drive emulator. And uh, this readout will show you which disk number you're on and you use the buttons to select which disk you want to appear as inserted into the drive. And uh, it's worked flawlessly so far. Uh, one thing I do recommend is that you um, don't use the software that came with it. I'll uh, put a link in the description for the software that I use. Um, it has a pretty generic name. It's just called USB floppy drive uh, emulator software. But the uh, software that it came with was uh, pretty much all in Chinese. It took a long time to... Uh, get it to show in English. And then even then it didn't work very well. Um, and it was kind of a uh, confusing interface and whatnot. So the software I'm about to show you is what I use to load up my images and uh, it's uh, worked great so far. So let's uh, check it out. Okay, so I just kind of wanted to go over how this uh, USB floppy drive emulator works. Um, so basically what you're doing is you're replacing the need for actual floppy disks um, with the uh, ability to use a USB flash drive instead. Um, and so what it does is it kind of breaks down your um, flash drive storage space into individual um, floppy disk size chunks. Um, and then you basically can load images on it. So the first thing that you'd want to do is obviously plug in your thumb drive, and then you'll want to format it. Um, it'll allow you to select the size of the floppy disks you want to use. I think 1.44 is probably the best in most cases. Um, you can choose to make the uh, um, actual floppy disks bootable. Uh, I think it takes, uh, yeah, it takes 9% of your disk storage because it puts a couple files on there. Probably not absolutely necessary if you're using image files, which will already have um, the files needed to make it bootable. So, um, you can also change how many disks you want on there. Uh, for my two gigabyte flash drive, a hundred disks is fine. And then, uh, you can select quick format. I don't see any problem with, uh, either selecting it or not. It just takes longer the other way. So go ahead and format it. This will create your hundred disks. Actually, the quick format doesn't seem much faster than the regular format, so whatever. Um, another thing to note is uh, I would suggest running this application in administrator mode. So you'll want to right click on the shortcut after you install it and then just select run as administrator. I've had some issues where it just won't write to the floppy disks if it's not. so. I guess your mileage may vary. So once uh, it's done formatting, it should show 100 disks on uh, your list there. They'll all say 9% used, but like I said, if you're using an image file, it'll overwrite that 9% anyways, so not too big of a deal. All right, so format complete. And yes, now we have a hundred disks starting at zero. So it goes to 99. So basically the way it works, um, and I'll just show you uh, how to load an image. Um, I'll be using a Windows 98 uh, boot disk. So you'll just wanna right click on the disk number that you wanna use. Um, right click and then say write image file and select your image file. And it's as simple as that. So the way that you know it's used is you can see the percentage has gone up. Uh, I would highly recommend creating a spreadsheet of what disks you put in what slot because 
it's going to be a little difficult to remember 100 disks and what's on them. Uh, so definitely have a spreadsheet. Uh, also, if you need to add, you know, say you don't have an image file and you just have a bunch of loose files that you want to add to the disk, you can also do that. Uh, if you just right click and click open and access denied. So this is probably not opened in administrator mode. Let's see what's going on. All right, running an administrator, click open. There you go. So that, that was one of the problems that I had with uh, not running it in admin mode. You can actually ac access the individual files, but this is uh, all the files that are on the uh, Windows 98 boot disk. So you can add more files or you could create a custom disk. It's up to you, but pretty simple to use. And uh, uh, yeah, so that's basically it. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and get the uh, floppy drive emulator uh, plugged in. I'm going to just leave it hanging um, because I want to leave the um, actual floppy drive in there for aesthetic purposes. So let's uh, go ahead and plug that in. Pretty simple. Let's unplug the power from the floppy drive and the cable. And we'll plug the cable now into um, the floppy drive emulator. And we got a couple bent pins, but that's not a problem. Get that snugly attached and then uh, plug the power in. Simple as that. Like I said, I'm just going to leave it hanging. So that is it. Okay. Let's go ahead and get uh, the uh, BIOS set up. Um, we're just going to kind of go through each of the pages and see if there's anything we need to change. Um, this isn't an exhaustive list of all of the features and functionality of this motherboard. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't know what all the settings do. I'd have to research it in the documentation. Um, so we're just going to go through the stuff that we know we need to change. So let's get started with the first one. Um, obviously we need to change the date. So what is it the 26th, I believe. And it is 2019. And let's see. So this is going to be in military time. And it is 6.24 a.m. All right. So the next thing we can do, let's, that looks all good. So let's push escape. Go to the BIOS features and see if there's anything in here we need to change. Um, we'll leave the boot sequence the same. And I think that everything will we'll enable smart capabilities. Um, that's uh, to check to make sure our hard drive is uh, functioning properly. Hopefully it'll give us a warning when it starts to fail. Um, other than that, everything looks good. Go to the chipset features. Everything seems fine. Our AGP card only has four megabytes, so we'll change that. I guess we'll leave 2x mode on for now. Um, if we run into compatibility issues, we might slow it down uh, to 1x or at least disable the 2x mode. Um, let's see, everything else looks fine. Let's go to the power management. Again, everything looks good. All right. PCI configuration. We'll leave the USB enabled, even though it's not going to work for Windows 3.1. Um, we don't want to load the fail safe safes or the optimal settings. Let's check out the integrated peripherals. Okay, everything's looking good. Leave everything enabled uh, or how it is uh, by default. Okay. Supervisor password, we don't need that. Let's do the uh, ID hard drive detection um, so that we don't have to, it'll just speed up the boot if we um, 
have it already set so it doesn't need to check it. Uh, we don't have any other hard drives, so we're good. All right, let's uh, save and exit setup. Hit Y for yes. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, what we came here for and install uh, MS-DOS 6.22 and also Windows 3.11. Um, first thing we're going to do is plug in our USB stick to our floppy drive emulator and then go ahead and boot up the computer. Make sure that your um, floppy disk emulator is set to zero uh, as that's the first disk, uh, at least in my setup. So let's see if it uh, boots to the floppy disk. And it is starting MS-DOS. Give it a second. And there we go, we're into the installer. Let's see. Set up MS-DOS now, press enter. Let's do that. Are these settings correct? They look correct. Let's do it. We'll install it to the default directory of C colon slash DOS. Press enter to continue. And we'll let that go. I'll speed up the footage here until it gets to the next disk. Okay, it's asking for disk number two. Let's change our floppy drive emulator to one because that's where my second disk is. And press enter. All right, let's switch to the third disk, which is number two on our floppy drive emulator and press enter. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, remove all the floppy disks from the drive and press enter. Um, you can just unplug the um, USB drive and that will do it. All right, press enter. It is MS-DOS is now installed. Uh, to restart, let's go ahead and press enter to continue. All right. So currently we have nothing uh, inserted into our floppy drive emulator. Let's see if this boots. And it does, starting MS-DOS. Doing an extended memory test, and it looks good. All right, so before I install Windows, there's actually a piece of software I got from uh, Phil's Computer Lab, which is a great site for retro computer building. Um, it's called the MS-DOS Starter Pack. And it basically gives you a few different modes to uh, boot into. So let's uh, switch to our floppy drive. And I have this uh, as disk number four in my floppy emulator. So let's go to our A drive. And let's see what's in that disk. Make sure it's the right one. And it is. So uh, we just type in install. And uh, that's about it. Press any key to continue. It installs a few files and we're good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, reboot the machine so you can see the uh, menu that uh, shows up with this uh, little MS-DOS starter pack. Let's do a control alt delete.
All right, starting MS-DOS. And uh, this is the uh, menu that comes with the uh, MS-DOS uh, starter pack. And it's handy for running different types of games. It gives you the mouse driver, um, different types of uh, memory configurations. Um, some certain software need different, um, you know, different types of memory expanded or extended. So uh, by default, it'll do the expanded memory plus mouse and CD support. So uh, that's handy for us because uh, if we want to use the CD-ROM or use a mouse, uh, we've got that support. So um, let's just test that the mouse is working. You can uh, type in edit and it'll pull up a, a MS-DOS editor and it looks like the mouse is working. Uh, it looks like we need to press escape to close that dialog box. And yeah, mouse is working fine. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and install Windows. Uh, we're gonna insert our uh, floppy drive emulator USB drive and uh, navigate to disk number five, which is where I have my first Windows 3.11 for work groups disk. And we'll navigate to the A drive and we'll take a look and see what's in there to make sure that we see if we type setup or if we type install. Looks like we type setup. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. We can see the setup.exe, so S-E-T-U-P, press enter. And hopefully it'll start here in a second. There we go. Let's go ahead and press enter to continue. Uh, let's do the custom setup. I'm feeling lucky. Yeah, we'll install into the default uh, Windows directory. Let's just press enter to continue. And VGA, PS2 mouse, looks good. And we'll go ahead and start the install. Okay, let's insert disk number two, which is number six on our floppy drive emulator, and press enter. We are now moving on to the actual Windows setup. Let's go ahead and type in our full name. We'll do a uh, company name of Mercury. We don't need a product number at this moment. So let's hit continue. Let's go ahead and verify that that's correct. Let's see. Set up all uh, only Windows components you selected. Set up a printer, we don't need a printer. Set up any applications already on the hard disk. I don't think we have any, but I think uh, it will place some of the DOS um, files that, you know, like edit and things like that into the applications menu. So we'll just leave that one checked. Let's hit continue. I guess we'll keep the readme files. We'll keep the accessories, games, screensavers, and wallpaper. We'll see what games it has. Oh, nice. Minesweeper, Heart, and Solitaire. Cool. All right. Well, let's continue the installation. All right. It's time to insert disk number three. So that will be number seven on our floppy drive emulator. Change it to seven and then hit OK. Alright, time for disk, disk number four. Let's change our floppy drive emulator to eight and then go ahead and click OK. Alright, time for the next disk. Same process as last time. 
increase the uh, discount on our floppy drive emulator and hit OK. Okay, disk number six, change our floppy emulator to disk number 10. Hit okay. All right, it looks like we're almost done. Let's go ahead and continue with the uh, network support guess we let's check out the advanced we've got no network drivers i don't really want to set up any network devices i don't think that we need to for now we may do that in the future since it is windows for work groups and supports it so we'll test that out at a later date hit continue did not modify blah 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 Okay, so it's basically saying it made a backup of our config sys and audio auto execute dot bat because uh, we had a custom one. So let's go ahead and hit okay. It's starting to look all too familiar. All right, let's search our uh, local drive C, see if there's any applications yep like i said so there's the mss ms dos editor so that'll show up in our uh applications menu let's go ahead and do that just for fun okay looks like there's a few others well let's go ahead and add them all might as well All right, let's go ahead and run the tutorial and see what we can learn. Okay. Let's learn some mouse lessons. Press the enter key to continue. Oh, is that how I hold a mouse? I'll be holding it with my left hand, but we'll say right because otherwise it swaps my buttons around. And you move the mouse uh, across the surface, an arrow shaped pointer moves across the computer screen. Who to thunk it? You can control the pointer by moving the mouse. Makes sense. Try moving the mouse now and watch it move. Yeah. Okay. Point to each number in order. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. We are an expert in mousing now. Okay. You can select an item by clicking. Yeah, makes sense. All right. Wow, we've come a long way. Double clicking? What? Gosh, I'm so good at this. Ooh, click and drag. Definitely a handy thing. I am a pro. All right, let's go on to the Windows Basic Lessons.
Why not? Uh, we already learned how to move around. Program Manager starts every time you start Windows. You use Program Manager to organize your programs or applications into groups. Each icon in the Program Manager window represents a group. Nice. Okay. Cool accessories. Okay, right is now running. Ooh, full screen, why not? Oh, I'm gonna click continue. There we go. Now right window is maximized. Okay. Let's minimize. Okay. Ooh, there it is. Now the right window is restored. Oh my god, I can move it. Wow, it's no wonder they call this Windows. Oh my God, we can change the size of it. Super sick. Open. We need to provide more information. All right, we must select a file to open. There are two ways. Okay. Or you can click the name. Wow. The mouse is a handy peripheral. Okay, let's open up chocolate. Okay, let's buy some yogurt. Chocolate sauce. No, we'll do premium ice cream. We're not on a diet. Actually, we are, but... Oh, I can only have five scoops. Yeah, banana's fine. Why not? Oh, well, okay. Oh, we can have more than one. Let's restore the program manager. Okay, active and inactive windows. There we go. Nice. Nice, okay. This is before they had the X. Double click the control option okay continue all right 
I'm done with this tutorial. I think I've got it. Type Y. Okay. Let's go ahead and return to MS-DOS. And uh, so when we turn on our computer, we'll just be at the normal C prompt. Um, to get to Windows, we would CD Windows and then type in Win. And it should load right up. Okay, and there you have it. Windows 3.11 is installed and ready to go. We will be doing uh, more videos on this uh, operating system where we'll be doing uh, probably a backup uh, of the original uh, fresh install state. So when we break it, which is inevitable, uh, we'll be able to restore it back to this current state as we see it now. Um, I'll probably be doing some benchmarks and uh, some software installations. So we'll be able to test out the performance of this PC. Um, in future videos, we will be doing uh, the rest of the Windows series. Uh, the next one will be Windows 95. So that ought to be fun. Hopefully it goes as well as this one did. And uh, we'll just see you next time. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe and check out my website, uh, shanetriplet.com. And we'll see you later. Thank you.